First, I want to <clears throat> start this video off by, uh, I had some people asking through email, quite a few people have mentioned uh, this piece of art hanging on the wall behind me, what it is. And those are the paw print impressions of um, my dog, Baby. My awesome, 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 brilliant dog, Baby, who is no longer with uh, us. She's been gone now for what, over a year, right? Two, years. Two whole years already? We had, it's going to be three years in October. Baby passed away. Probably two two years, maybe. Wow. Easter. Anyway, so that's what that's about. That's what that is. There's a lot of stuff around here. Memorializing baby. What a dog, man. That dog was. That dog understood <clears throat> just hand commands, hand signals, uh, and she understood right turn, left turn. You know. She could be walking ahead of you, uh, and you could say, if, you, if I had her out there looking, and I could say, right turn, baby, right turn, she'd go right. I said, left turn, she'd go left. She knew, she could differentiate between colors. Now, I don't know, uh, for instance, if she had four different balls and they were all different colors, I don't know that red to her is the same red I see, or blue to her is the same blue that I see, but she learned what her red was, the difference in those balls, and that ball was red. And she learned what her blue was, and that ball, you know, which I taught her was a blue ball, however she saw it, she could still tell from shades or whatever a dog can see. Maybe she can see blue, I don't know what she could see, but she could differentiate it. That if I told her to go get her ball, she went and got a ball, and I said, not that ball, your blue ball. Go get your blue ball. She'd look all around for it, and if she didn't see it downstairs, I could say, baby, your blue ball, it's upstairs in the bedroom. Upstairs, bedroom. She'd think a minute, and then she'd go trotting off real quick, go up the steps. She'd come back with a blue ball. So, you know, she could go do that with a red ball, green ball, yellow ball. She was a really smart dog. What a good dog. Good Lord, what an awesome, awesome dog. Anyway... Um, so the dog we have now was slated to be uh, euthanized, killed, and the opportunity came presented to us from people who knew who we were that if you are willing to take this dog, then we can make the only exception that we can obtain to save her from being euthanized is if you two take her. We can bring her directly to your house because if she goes straight to the shelter, back to the shelter, she's going to be euthanized. So, of course, we don't want to see a poor dog euthanized. And plus, we, you know, they had all these pictures of the dog. And the dog uh, has issues. So we took the dog. The dog's been with us now for how long we had this dog? In a year? Oh, a year. Hmm? No, she, well, yeah, a year. About a year we've had her. Maybe a year. Well, we didn't get her long after baby's passing. No, baby passed Easter. We got her in May. Yeah, baby passed in Easter and we got her in May. Because I didn't want a dog again, especially right away. I didn't want another dog. It was an emergency. But it was an emergency. So I'm wrong about the dates there, but... About the uh, elapsed time. But she's a good dog. She's a really good dog. She's uh, a little bit learning disabled. Genuinely. But then one thing I think that Val stumbled onto is that this dog may speak Spanish. And she may not really have as much of a learning disability. It may just be that this is a new language for her. Because we don't know where she came from. She was a stray, uh, you know, allegedly for and she, the pound picked her up. And then she went out to two different adoptive families. And both places something bad happened. So we got her now. She's got a lot of scars and, uh, you know, where she's been bitten and otherwise injured in a lot of places. But she's a really sweet dog. She can be trying once in a while, but 
But she is an, uh, one thing. She, everybody's good at something. And one thing she's awesome at, she's an incredible guard dog. She's an incredible, you know, guard dog. When it comes to security, this dog is really, really good at that. So everybody's good at something. Everyone has use. And this leads into this topic, which is about redemption. Because I had a young man email me um, from his tone and uh, his wording. I think it's pretty safe to say he's not from the USA. He's probably uh, from Great Britain somewhere. Um, and he talked about how grateful he was that he found our channel because these types of videos, not just the training stuff, but encouraged him to change the track that he was on. He grew up in a culture surrounded by, he puts it, gangsters, that all of his friends are gangsters. And um, doing a lot of bad things, a lot of things that were not good for him or for people around him that were not part of his circle, inner circle. And uh, a lot of negative influence, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, positive reinforcement for, for bad behavior. And he started to think about it. He's a thinking person. And he heard some of the things that we talk about and espoused. And he related. And he decided, he said that he was going to change his life. And so he's changed his life. And he told me that he was very honest. He said that he had cut off all ties with all, about 90% of everyone that he knew because they just didn't fit with his desire um, to change his life and have a different kind of a lifestyle practice, a different type of behavior that 90% of the people around him, they, that didn't jive, wouldn't work within that frame. And he goes to the gym, he keeps to himself, and he just is, uh, was very grateful and the one thing that kind of haunts him is because he's continuing along, improving himself and his life situation. Uh, but he feels that he can never achieve redemption because in the back of his head, he's not sure he's deserving because of some of the behavior that he's practiced. And um, I just want to say that He's absolutely so young. He has the majority of his life ahead of him. Majority. You know, if you really are hard on yourself and you're down on yourself, and this is for anybody out there, and you feel that where you're coming from, that there's no sense in changing now or switching streams, you know, and that you don't deserve, you do not deserve better. You don't deserve for anybody to pat you on the back, for any type of behavior that you might uh, display that is laudable and good, and positive, for anybody to compliment you on that kind of behavior that you don't deserve it because you're so used to having this negative behavior that that's positively reinforced in certain circles and things. And you feel like you don't belong around, you know, good and decent people now that you're beginning to acquire and attract to you because of the change that you've made. Trust me, you do deserve it. You do deserve it. Other people in our community of man, woman, humanity, they deserve it and you do deserve it. You do deserve it. It's, it's part of a learning process. That, that um, positive reinforcement you got for negative behavior in the past that now you know that that's not the way to go that there's no real uh, ascension in that, that there's no progression in that in any positive direction, really. It's just empty. It's an empty bunch of reward. It doesn't do anything good for your soul and your heart and your spirit. And it doesn't, it certainly doesn't benefit any other good and decent people. But it doesn't benefit you either. It doesn't benefit you either. So it's okay to, uh, to feel like not only you're on the right track and practicing a better way, but it's okay to feel good about yourself for that. It's okay to, to pat yourself on the back and say, man, I'm proud of myself because I have made such an, an excellent change. I'm not perfect. 
I'm far from it, and I still have a ways to go. But it's good and healthy, and it's actually part of the process, and it's productive for you to recognize that you're improving and that you're better for it and that you it's okay for you to feel good about yourself because of this change in progression. Because that's going to be able to uh, inspire you to continue. It's okay now to have positive reinforcement for positive behavior. When you think about it, the, the, the semantics of it, it's almost uh, a no-brainer. You know, if negative behavior, positive reinforcement you got for that felt good to you, and now you know that that's not the way to go at all, that it was just a facade. Well, then the opposite must be good and true. If you are committing good behavior, it's okay to receive positive reinforcement for that, and it's okay to feel good too about yourself. Be proud of your change. Be proud of yourself. That's what life is about. You know, uh, what's between birth and death that's life. That's the journey. And there is a journey. Many, many, many people, they progress slowly. And, and, and from a young age, they make awesome progress at first. They're like a rocket ship. They learn and they absorb so much and they come to their own conclusions and they, you know, apply this new brain. They're learning how to um, correlate thoughts and input together, arrive at decisions and make good decisions and healthy decisions and all this stuff. And then as they get a little bit into adulthood and a little further, they start to slow down a little bit because now they're pretty stable, they feel comfortable, and they feel that the structure they're standing on is pretty sound and this is who they are already. And that's good, but don't be so sure that there's not much, much, much more room and need for growth. Uh, myself, I'm a completely different person, same physical being, and I have the past is my past, I own it. But I am a completely different person than I was at 21, 22, 23 years old. Totally different. Perspective is different. Things I thought completely 100% sure on, clear on, that I know exactly that I'm correct about that. And now looking back, I didn't know shit. I didn't know a damn thing at that age. Not like I thought I did. It's laughable to think of how how sure I was about some things then, that today I look back on and realize I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was thinking. Sorry. And, uh, and, and, and likewise, from 30 to now, from 40 to now, another huge dramatic period where I've really changed a lot. It's just in the past 10 years even. So uh, I think we always, you always want to try and strive to become better and improve. Just like you do anything else. Um, the easy way to learn this thing is through the training that we do. You know, you're striving to improve, you're striving to become better, become more in some way, shape, or form. And um, that applies to your spirit too. You know, it applies to you emotionally, mentally, cognitively, the whole nine yards as much as you can. It's all good. So everybody, I'm a big believer, man, in uh, second chances and even third chances. Uh, even fourth chances. I mean, you can fall off all you want as long as you keep getting back on and you make it a little further each time till eventually you're going to get it. But you just can't quit because between birth and death, that's life and it's the journey and you're living it. And some things are easier for some people, some things are more difficult for other people, but it's still your life and you own it and you possess it and you've been uh, empowered with it. So live it. Live it, you know. Uh, live that journey. It's yours. It's your story. It's your journey. So I think you should feel awesome about yourself there. And most definitely, you know, any kind of negative influence that's around you, if you submerge yourself in that, um, especially initially, you need to, uh, to cut all that, get away from all of that. I remember a period in my life where I had to rid myself of uh, my entire social circle because they, I could clearly see they're not going where I want to go. And, um, you know, we parted company and I just had to put them to the side, man. A lot of people had to go. But you find uh, new people and the reason you were with those people is because you were given off a similar vibe. You were given off a similar vibe. You guys were kindred at that time in, in some aspect. And now you're going to give off a different vibe and you're going to attract different people to you. And you're going to be looking for different things in people, you know.
that you recognize as kindred. And they see it in you, likewise. And that really keeps moving it up, your circle. Those around you that you move through or keep it positive, keep it good, keep uh, improving and ascending and expanding and being more and better. And ultimately, hopefully sooner or later, you're going to come to a point where you're not just able to improve yourself, but you're able to help other people that are on a similar path that maybe haven't gotten to where you are yet. You know, so it's a great thing, man, and it just uh, it just continues. It extrapolates and it influences and it grows, just like negativity does. Maybe not as quickly, but I think it's more cemented. I think it has a greater permanence to it, and it's definitely more desirable and more pleasant and more rewarding at a spiritual level. I feel it is anyway to help rather than to hinder. So, man, you know. Yeah, don't feel bad. It's good, you know. You need to be not only your your uh, your biggest critic, but you also need to be your biggest cheerleader. Both at the same time. At the same time, I am my biggest critic. You know, it's okay to recognize your shortcomings. Uh, it, it's necessary to be healthy, but you also need to be able to be your biggest supporter and your biggest cheerleader. You need to be able to to realize when you've done right and when you're on the right path and you need to be able to be, to feel good about that. Give yourself a thumbs up for that. So don't um, let the past be an anchor that you just drag around, you know? It keeps catching in the ruts in the ground and holding you back. And don't, don't stay tied to any anchors like that if you're trying to continue moving and they're holding you back. You know, at least the ball and chain rolls to some extent anchor you know so it's a progression so eventually you know one day those chains will be gone they'll just be shadows all right that's all take care um stay cognizant stay on the path stay conscientious and have an awesome day